Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, my, my good friend, Pastor Matt Richard. How's it going? It's good to see you, Harrison. Good to see yeah. you, too. Clipping along. Been, uh, man, super busy here at the church. We had Easter, and then we had a Higher Things retreat here at St. Paul's. Went went phenomenal. We had a bunch awesome. of great pastors out there speaking, and uh, you know, about 10 or 11 churches from our area that came to that. It was great. And then, uh, man, I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you yet, but we had a 90 year, 98-year-old saint Name's Jane, uh, blessed Grandma Jane. She passed away this last week. And so, you know, normally with funerals, when you get people in their 90s, you know, they can be, what, 30, 40 people. We had like 200 people out for this gal. She's, oh, just, wow. she's, just, she's just a gem, 98 years old. And man, every every week, you know, she'd come down the aisles of St. Paul's and waving at everybody and shaking hands. And I'd get a Grandma Jane hug and kiss every Sunday. And so, yep, until the resurrection. That's the <laughs> until hope. Until the resurrection. Yep, indeed. It's it's easier to do kind of those funerals during the season of Easter sometimes. So when you know that the the hope is just sort of right there all around you. Yeah, I mean, just to, I, I was mentioning to a couple of parishioners, I said I don't I don't know how we do this life without the hope of the resurrection. I mean, it's dark. Yeah, I mean, it just if there's no hope of the resurrection, then what's the point of living? I mean, it's just like there's there's there's, there's nothing. But the yeah. hope of the resurrection, right? On the other hand, God be praised, right? Absolutely. Like without that, honestly, we spend most of our time just trying to explain away God. Like, like really, um, why is it so bad down here? Why? And, and we don't want to take the blame ourselves because of sin. So yeah, the resurrection actually fixes our eyes on, on, on Christ, which is actually where I kind of want to go with today. So, so call that a segue. Um, yeah, nice. yeah, I like it. Uh, so, so what does Jesus say about abiding in him? And, and I want to talk not just sort of in, in light of Easter, in light of the resurrection, because we have that, that old hymn, but also, especially in sort of this present age, when when we're trying to sort of find our shelter, it, it seems like more and more politics are starting to define it. It, it, it becomes sort of um, not just because it's a, an election year, but but just in the reality that, that we're a divided society right now. And does Jesus actually have a, a thing to say about this? Is he on my side? Is he on the other side? Like, how do I know I'm abiding in Jesus? What does this mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, the word abide itself, right? If we think about how it's used in the New Testament, you know, I always hear the word abide. It's basically we can translate it like stay put. Right, mm-hmm. stay put, remain. Uh, you know all these metaphors, anchored, connected to the vine. I mean, all of these beautiful metaphors. Now, if we think about this, and, and we're mentioning just briefly before, and this has been kind of my contention as I look at culture. If you think, imagine maybe like two two nails, and put a rubber band around those nails, and you have what with that rubber band, you're going to have tension. And what typically ends up happening is. Things can kind of remain in tension if you have these two nails, but as soon as what somebody moves that nail this way, it increases the tension to pull yeah. the rest of the people this way. And in a lot of ways, I think culture from the from the beginning of time, I mean, we've had this idea where we have tension, societal tension on culture, where culture pulls us one way or the other. So people tend to move the markers and it pulls the rubber band and we feel that pull this way. And so a lot of people, instead of resisting that pull, they just go along with it to, to reduce the tension of the rubber band. Others, though, they'll respond to that by saying, no, you're not going to get me, so I'm going to what go this way, go the opposite. Yeah. And then what? Well, next thing you know, we're, we're, we're going back and forth on rubber band, playing the tug of war game. And you think about that when it comes down to it, then we're playing tug of war on the basis of culture and societal norms. And then I'd have to ask this question, where's Christ? Uh I would, I would actually assert and that Christ is not on the rubber band, that Christ is Christ. He's above it all. And so uh, we, we abide in Christ by oftentimes not playing the games, but mm-hmm. by abiding confidently in Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't, we don't you know, we ignore it, but we can speak into it. But we speak into it not from a perspective of reacting. Mm-hmm. We, we speak into culture. We speak into the reality of life from a position of authority, a position of rest, a rock, if you will. Right. I, I think sort of the, the recognition of, of not just what is true, but what needs to be addressed gets uh, changed if, if sort of all you have is, is that rubber band. Uh, because we know that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. But if all you're really looking at is the other side and where they're pulling the, the rubber band, it, it what needs to be said and what needs to be won right away can sometimes even start to overshadow the truth just to make sure that they don't have the last voice. They don't have, you know, the, 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 the loudest truth, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then you mentioned earlier too that Jesus says, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." And so, truth we find in Christ, and that truth then is to what not to simply remain in some sort of undisclosed box or 
to be muffled, but it is to go forth into the midst of it. And so that truth itself can then speak into this side and this side and in the middle. It speaks to all of it. And so Christ speaks all to, to all aspects of life, calls people to repentance and faith in him and to receive his good gifts. Um, however, it's so very easy, I think, so very easy for us to get pulled into that pendulum. Now, now there's a sense where obviously there's tension that has to be happening and so forth. But again, I guess my point that I'm making is, is we don't abide in a societal cultural norm. We don't abide in a political system. We abide in Jesus who is above that and, uh, and who stands above it and over it. And so therefore, um, we often don't have to be playing this, this game back and forth. Again, we, we, we abide in assurance. Uh, we stand upon the rock. And, and that, that analogy of a rock works well too as well. If you have, you have wind and waves that push, you know, the, the, the water will push this way, a high tide and a low tide. Water will go back and forth and we can be well, I mean, Paul picks up on this too, that we're little children being tossed to and fro by the winds and the cunning, deceiving schemes of mankind and the world itself. And we can end up, what, bouncing over here, bouncing over here, up, down, left, right. And we have no idea where we're at. But Christ is the abiding rock. We stand upon Christ. We're anchored in Christ. Um, mm-hmm. We have our surety in Christ. Um, and that Christ is the word that he neither withers nor fades, that he remains to the very end. And so for us as Christians, uh, we stand above it, or not even above, yeah, above it, we could say, and in the midst of it and through it because of Jesus. Right. It, it, it actually lets us then define what's what's wrong in, in a much more simple way. Um, it, it's, it's kind of fun to use a small catechism, a, a, a thing that norms our faith that, that was written, uh, what, 500 years ago. Um, and, and when Luther sort of lays this out, he talks about the enemies of the church, and we would be so otherwise very, very quick to sort of say, what's the enemy of the church today? And almost anybody just wants to to just gut react and say the culture. Um, it's it's over and over again. I sort of get this this complaint, this concern, this fear. A- and Luther talks about it this way: um, the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh. Um, and so the world, that the culture is is a, a problem five hundred years ago, not just today, but also the devil, also you. Yeah. And, and when we sort of get to, to have these things, then the, the problem isn't wholly external that you just need to tug against, but, but rather uh, the, the thing that, that is going to, to save, that is going to be the rock that you build on, that is Christ, so that when the winds come and the waves pound, y- your, your house is left standing, so that, that as Paul talks about, you would no longer be tossed about by everything that, that's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a great point, too. You know, our enemies, yeah, definitely the world, ideologies of the world, no doubt about it. I mean, those are mm-hmm. definitely, definitely enemies of us. And they do pull on us. Uh, the devil, he attacks us with flaming arrows. But man, right here, you, me, right, us. And so we need deliverance from all three of those to abide in Christ, to abide in his hope and surety. And then and then when we're abiding in Christ, we have peace. We have assurance. We have confidence. Uh, we don't have uncertainty. Um, we can maneuver in this life. And, I, and, and again, you know, culture is up, down, left, right. And it's always been that way. It always will, will be that way. And it'll continue to be that way. But then we have the surety of his word and sacraments. And then even that even plays into a sense to our, our divine services on Sunday. Sure. I just just love coming to our services, you know, and plenty of people have wonderful services too. Uh, but we think of, I think of my St. Paul's church here, my, my members, they come, it's like, man, we know what to expect every Sunday. We come, we hear the word, we're absolved of our sins, we're reminded of our baptism, we receive the sacrament, we hear the word of God. In season and out of season, right? And that's what Paul says, to preach the word in season and out of season, not to let our ears be tickled and to be bouncing back and forth. And again, that's that's that surety of the of the gospel, the cross, you know, mm-hmm. Christ and his word in this chaotic world. That's the thing that, that doesn't just sort of speak to the outside world that's not listening, but it also speaks to the heart, not not only sort of what is, is to be brought in repentance, but also what hope you're supposed to have. And that's, that, again, will come back to, to sort of that tension analogy with the rubber band, because if the only problem exists on the other side, pull pull hard. Uh, but but if you're actually recognizing that you have just as much of a tendency because of, of sin, because of, of, of old Adam, because of the condition you have in your heart, to pull in a way that is outside of what Christ would do, out, yeah. outside of what Christ would be, you're going to end up just as far away from him. And, and you can end up in, in a, an overreaction that is just as, as unchristian in a completely different fashion. And so to abide in Christ then is to hold on to, to his, his law and his gospel, both. Yeah. Well, and that whole analogy, again, glad you brought that up in that analogy again. So you look at those two things. If you pull too hard, what happens? The nail pops out and you what? Mm. You fly way over here. And 
<laughs> which does happen, right? You know, so we'll put we'll put tension on that, and then the nail comes out, and then the rubber band snaps you, and the next thing you know, you're you're an extreme over there. Mm-hmm. And so uh, again, this tossing back to and fro, uh, this is not how the church works. The church abides. We we we, we abide in Christ. His word is true. It's unchanging. It's stable. It's consistent. And we speak into the culture and in spite of culture as we abide in Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor.